everybody, my name is Brooke and this is Maker's Workshop. Today I'm going to be making a set of steel CNC plasma cut lanterns. I'm going to cover the process from design to completion. I've never designed for steel before, so I'm really looking forward to getting started. I did up this design in Adobe Illustrator. I like to jump into a first draft pretty quickly because it gets me out of my head and starts the creative process. I threw together four rectangles that were about the size I thought I wanted, and then four triangles. Any isosceles triangle or one with two angles that are the same will make a roof shape, so there's no need to overthink dimensions just yet. So I want to cut it in cardboard on the laser and then assemble it here first, because then like, if it looks like junk in cardboard, it will also look like junk in steel and I'll know that ahead of time. I cut out a miniature version of my first design on our Glowforge laser cutter. And then I started taping it together to get a sense of how it would look as a three-dimensional piece. Maybe I should be hot gluing this. What? Hot glue, that's what we're gonna do. In my mind, I had this being much easier to do. <laughs> you know what? I am going to tack hot glue it. And then we just do small circular motions to get the most effective Seam. What do you think? Is it like ugly or is it cute? I mean, it's cardboard with hot glue all over it. Well, like, not that part, like the design. Yeah, that was good. Okay. Oh, no, oh, no. This is not square at all. Oh, that was hot glue. Good thing I have hands of steel. Oh, oh, oh. Right, cool, I'm in the middle door. Good. This was really not supposed to be the hardest part of this build. <laughs> Yet here we are. Okay, well there's my first prototype. I feel like that's pretty good though. Right? The main things I was trying to test with this little prototype was A, to decide if I hated this pattern, which I actually, I actually like it. I think I was just, staring at it for too long and then the second was the pitch of the roof and the size of the roof um which I could get away with using this as the final one I was picturing it a little differently I guess so it, a little slight change but it's purely for cosmetic reasons pretty cool If there's fire in here, like it needs to vent up and out of somewhere. Like I think it's probably open enough that it would be fine, but. We don't have a CNC plasma cutter at Maker's Workshop. So I emailed my design to our friend Richard at 42 Fab. Who agreed he would cut this for me. A CNC plasma table is actually a pretty similar machine to a laser cutter. The machine just moves around a plasma cutter that can easily get through steel rather than a laser. And they're really cool to watch work because they make steel sheets look like butter with a really high level of precision. Richard is in Oklahoma, so I emailed him the design and then needed to wait for it to show up in the mail. He honestly got it back to me much more quickly than I expected to have to wait, which was great. The package has arrived and it is heavy. 
I also asked him going out on a limb if he would cut two smaller lanterns of the same design, and he said yes, which was also really cool. I cleaned off all the steel front and back with acetone to prep it to be welded. The order of operations, so to speak, that I do the welding in is going to be really important. So I'm just going to assemble each of the uh, three basic units completely and then put those three together. So I have like the base of the lantern here and then the first roof section and then the very top roof section. I started with a tack in the middle and then one on each end to distribute the heat. And then I split the difference with two more tacks. This was a really fantastic part of the process because tacking goes really quickly and I could see the lantern take shape in minutes. These roof pieces are gonna be a little bit trickier because I can't use the clamps in the same way I was using for the square piece. I perched the roof pieces against two magnetic squares and made sure that I had a right angle on the top rim. This method, while certainly not technically perfect because I was doing a lot of it just by eye, did produce a pretty darn square roof. last thing to install with tacks before I started running full beads along each seam. starting to get cold and late and dark, so I'm gonna call it a night for today and then pick up tomorrow where I left off. But it's really cool to see this thing take shape, especially next to all of my little cardboard models. running full beads on all of my seams and assembling two smaller versions of my design. Because it takes a good amount of focus, welding is really calming for me, almost meditative, and the time flies by. Last night I was really eager to get started on this, so I just flipped the welder on and went for it. Uh, turns out this it was set for a thicker gauge steel than I had, and I actually was able to pull off some decent welds despite that. That looks way better. Get in the hand. Stop. What? Oh, stop! They're feeling like you suck. <laughs> no, don't feel like you suck at all. But this morning when I got started on the smaller ones, I realized it, fixed my settings, and I was able to get through these ones a lot easier. Um, the end result is that I have a really mixed bag as far as the welds go. Some of them look really nice, some of them look really not so nice, but that's what a grinder's for anyway. Um, I'm going to grind all these corners so that they're nice and square before thinking about finishing steps. Grinding easily took up the bulk of the time in this build, but I'm just gonna breeze through it for the sake of the video. At this point, I also took a minute to patch up a few spots with some fresh welds, 
including one particularly bad hole on one of my smaller roof pieces. To fill it in, I placed a tack or two on its perimeter and then let them cool completely before adding more tacks. This took some patience, but worked like a charm to completely fill the hole. And then it was back to grinding. All right, I've danced between welding and grinding and welding and grinding and I have my joints to a point where I'm happy with them. In theory, I could keep doing this till the end of time and get them perfectly perfect. But like I said, I'm happy with them. And there's two design things I wanted to talk about uh, that I learned through this process. One, I really think that I should have made the base piece bigger than the actual lantern size because then there'd be a nice easy spot for the weld to sit in and then I could have ground down the actual base piece and the weld together and gotten a much more square bottom. I would have never thought to do that to my design. The only way I would have learned that was through doing it. So I actually count that as a win even though the bottom of my lantern isn't as square as I would have otherwise wanted it. And then the second thing is that my roof pieces. I actually got pretty square, all things considered, but I think it would have made my life a whole lot easier had I actually left all the separate triangular pieces together with like a little tab holding them because then I could have just manually bent them and then welded it. Uh, I just think it would have been much easier to hold the square. The next thing I needed to do was chop up some angle iron into one inch pieces using the chop saw. In order to properly vent the smoke, the roof sections should be floating above the lantern instead of being welded directly against it. I carefully positioned each piece of angle iron on the corners of the lantern and then welded it into place. A really simple change to my original design would make it so that this step is completely unneeded, but this method did work really well. All right, so if there's any crazy wonkiness with these, it's not that big of a deal because they're not gonna be visible. So I am gonna move on. I'm gonna assemble all of the roofs separately and then the very last step is gonna be putting the base and the roofs together. The bottom roof section also needed angle iron before it was ready to be welded to the very top piece. I don't know if this is proper form or not, but I used painter's tape to help perch these together how I wanted them to make it easier to place the tacks. I tacked from the outside so that I could visually get things exactly how I wanted and then ran my full beads from the inside where it was easier to access things. I've got a roof. I'm, it's getting dark, so it's kind of hard to see, so I'm gonna call it a night, but I'm really excited to pick this up tomorrow. I wasn't fully happy with my corners, or rather I knew I could make them better, so I mixed up some Bondo and placed it as needed. Once it had set up for about 15 minutes, I was able to easily hand sand this into some more precise corners. 
And then I covered all sides with a sandable primer to lay the groundwork for a nice, even, finished paint job. Using the hinges I chose, I stenciled on where holes needed to be drilled on all three lanterns. and then installed the hardware with a small bolt. And then I applied my final paint job so that the hinges would also be black. This particular paint is an indoor-outdoor matte black uh, meant for grills, and it worked perfect for this project too. I wanted a sleek look to the finished piece, so instead of a bulkier hardware, I actually just used two rare earth magnets in the door opening. This worked like a charm and I was really happy with it. And then all that was left was popping some candles in and enjoying the finished piece. This project's all done and I really enjoyed this. I actually find just making patterns and designs fun. So having the opportunity to design for new material was really cool. And I definitely think that if I were to design something again for steel, I've gained some really important nuggets. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the subscribe button so that you can follow along with everything that we make here at Maker's Workshop. And I'll see you next time. Hey there, it's Brooke again. There were a couple of requests for it, so Richard's actually gonna be making my design one of his Weld It Yourself kits with the addition of the couple of changes that I talked about in this video. If you're interested in that, I'm gonna be linking information in the video description.